Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin and a how to trade a head and shoulders pattern. I just got to say, if you like this kind of content, you should stay till the end, check out all our other social medias and, you know, just give us a like and a follow. Soon we're going to be doing Twitter spaces, hosting Twitter spaces. Before this video begins, I just got to say, this is not financial advice. We don't accept liabilities for loss that you might incur. And everything here is strictly for news research and educational purposes. And like I said, we're talking about a head and shoulders today, right? So it's pretty clear what we have here. You know, the left shoulder, the head, and then the right shoulder. So from here, a lot of people are like, all right, well, what does that mean? Well, it just means that it's bearish. And it could be bearish up until this point. So realistically speaking, I don't know if you guys had seen, for people in my in my Telegram and my Discord, I actually mentioned at 39k, roughly around there, that that would be a good time to confirm the short. And the reason being is this is our floor, right? So I'm going to show you like how I traded how I trade a head and shoulders, right? This is our floor. This is where the head and shoulders is technically supposed to finish playing out. And then from here, our left and right shoulder. Now. I'm basing my whole trade off of this right here. So the right shoulder forms, fine. There's not much we could really do about that. But as you could see here, right? So it's like this bottom. Oop, this bottom over here was where I, I did the confirmation more or less. So you zoom in a little bit closer and you see. Off of this bottom over here, I map out this basically support point before we drop. And for me, I remember I put a I put a note a note a memo out roughly around the 39k region to say like, hey guys, if we break that point, we're dipping further. And not only are we dipping further to people who day trade or do futures, I was basically saying like, hey, that's a heads up. Like if we break 39, it could be a great opportunity to short because there's no reason not to be making money while the market is down. You can make money both sides of the fence. And obviously we prefer to see the market going up, but sometimes it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really work out that way. So that's more or less how I traded the head and shoulders, right? So based off of these support points, and especially here, you could see where it bounced. So it almost like confirms it. You could even go a little bit higher. But this more or less it like confirms that that was roughly the point that I was gonna make a final decision because even from here, if we held it, it could have just consolidated and moved upwards. We were really waiting for it to break past that, that, that key support. And then once it breaks past that support, technically, this is the range between, let's say, 39, which is basically the confirmation, to roughly about the 29, 30 range. And then that's roughly when the pattern finishes playing out. And we saw what happened last time that happened. You know, it was a pretty big bloodbath, but... One of the things that I wanted to mention was this, which I found kind of weird, was I personally think that this dump was more manipulation. And the reason being, and I'll, I'll explain why, is look at the volume right here. So the early point is where we're at, and this was the last time a big dump happened, right? So my take on it is right here, this was a huge buy. This is many whales and many big players jumping in. And then right here, you see this is not that big of a volume spike considering how big the drop is. There's been regular days that have had more volume than this 50% correction. And, well, 50, 40% correction or something along those lines. But regardless, the volume is very small. So for me, it almost feels like it was less about a sell-off or a buy and more about bots pushing the price downwards and usually when that happens it could be an entry sign for a bigger player so that's my two cents because usually when you see a big dump like that you will see massive volume spikes and that's kind of what i found fishy about this was you see here the volume was 353k bitcoin that is a lot of fucking bitcoin versus 90 which is like a fourth of the actual volume you know what i mean like for me i find that kind of weird you know and naturally here it's a lot to think about because me personally when i don't see a lot of volume like this it's not very bullish for me but at the same time too like 
the fact that the price was pushed downwards and there wasn't a lot of volume, for me, it indicates that this is mostly retail and there's articles confirming that most of the buys recently were retail, but also it could also signify that the bottom isn't in yet because retail is the one buying and what you want to see is the whales buying. You know what I mean? Like look at the volume difference, right? So if the whales start buying in, that's probably when you're going to see that large spike. That volume for me, it kind of feels like things are still a little bit bearish, even though we're kind of holding this, pro this point. And I think a big key as to what's about to happen here is whether we could actually hold this. So if we actually hold the 35 point, then, you know, there's a good chance that, all right, so we're not done with the actual cycle, like the, the greater cycle, like from a, from a large scale perspective. And we could see another rally per, uh, probably around springtime. But if we hit this point at the third, like let's say we, we drop a little bit further and we finish this head and shoulders, right? From there, it's make or break. Because if we don't hold 30, there's a good chance that we keep crashing. And if we keep crashing, from there, your best opportunity is to tether up and short. And you know what? Short at a low leverage and be careful because, you know what I mean? Like, it's Bitcoin, right? It's very volatile. It could go up or down as quickly as, you know what I mean? Like, literally like gravity. Just throw a ball up in the air and watch it crash, you know? Like, that's what's up with Bitcoin. So now we're at a point this range right here between 30 and 35 where we really know what's going to happen. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not panicking. You guys shouldn't panic. You know what I mean? Like your best case scenario is you have a range to shorten before we bounce forward or the alternative is you ride that short to the ground. I don't personally think that we're going to go all the way back to electricity costs, but it's possible. And if we do go back to electricity costs for Bitcoin, that would make the range roughly about 10K US to, per Bitcoin. And if we actually hit that point, understand how many people are waiting to buy at that point. And not only people waiting to buy, but also like an understanding that the halving cycle is already in the process of starting again. So it's like by 2023, 2024, the next halving cycle starts and begins by 2024. So it's like, Worst case scenario, we have a cold year. Worst case. But I don't personally think it's going to be that way, considering how many large players have gotten in and are getting in. And I would even say that this is basically the precursor of more big people entering. Because no one wants to buy the top. Retail doesn't like it. So why would billion dollar corporations like that? They don't. They're probably buying this dip. There's a good chance. Dollar cost averaging in, they're probably waiting for the head and shoulders to finish at 30. And then that's probably when we're going to see the volume spike. And you can see even here in the, in the MACD, we still haven't really balanced out yet. We're still in that free fall range. And that free fall range could basically finish the pattern. We're going to know... Uh, within a week or two, technically. But if you look at the four hour chart, we're already coming out of recovery. And people can say whatever they want about like, oh, the four hour, the eight, eight hour, this hour. At the end of the day, the daily is made up of hours. And the hours are made up of minutes, right? So all these indicators ultimately work off of all these previous time increments bundled together. So if the four hour is looking like there's a recovery, then technically speaking, there is eight four hours in a day. Yeah, so eight increments of four hours in a day, meaning that realistically, if the four hour chart is bottomed out and it's starting to show positive, it could be an indicator within, let's say, a few days or a week if we're at the bottom of this, uh, of this dump. And then once we've confirmed the bottom, I'm sure that's roughly when the volume and you know retail FOMO and all these things are going to start back up again personally I don't think the cycle's over I think we're playing into a much larger cycle now and it's less about uh, plan b and all these guys that are like oh I know what's going to happen because they don't 
plan B was like, oh, 100K Bitcoin in January, then they weren't right. I mentioned that it wasn't going to happen, and a lot of people said plan B said so. I'm like, I don't give a fuck what plan B says. It's just not in the, just not in the cards right there. I've been saying spring rally for the last month, month and a half, two months, because the way everything was looking, it wasn't looking like we were going to see 100K Bitcoin in a month. Just not happening. So now plan B is calling for a 20K bottom. Personally, I don't think that 20K is the bottom. They're banking it off of a chart that I saw, like a, a, a lifetime chart. And it's like a previous top of the 2017 cycle is going to be the bottom of this cycle. And I'm not saying that it's impossible, kind of likely, but personally, the way I see it is if we actually do crash further, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's that much further. And if it does crash further, then there's no reason why it wouldn't go back to electricity costs like it does every other year. So that's my, my two cents on that. But that's like the worst case scenario. And the reason I don't think that that's actually going to happen is because these are the years that they actually integrated futures into Bitcoin. If that was actually the, the play, if that was actually what was going to happen like every other year, people would short it and they would make a lot of money. And I'm sure you guys have heard on this channel where I talk about overcrowded trades. So the second everyone decides, oh, we're going to short or we're going to go long, that's usually when they get wrecked. Because when you get an idea, assume that a lot of the time, a bunch of other people have the same idea, especially when it comes to going long. Most people going long are like very optimistic. So optimistic bulls are the lifeblood of realistic bears. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's basically what it is. So the bulls are always optimistic. I like being a bull. It's way more fun. Everything goes up. Number only goes up. And anyone who disagrees is a communist. Bears are communist. That's it. <laughs> but obviously it's more fun to be a bull. But at the same time, you do have to rebase everything by being a bear sometimes. And this is probably the most bearish outlook you're going to see from me when it comes to crypto because I'm mostly a bull. I believe long-term the price will always go up regardless of short-term volatility. But there's also an understanding that shorts make a lot of money. And if you know when to jump in on the short end, you can make a shit ton of money because when shit drops, it drops fast and it drops hard. And if you catch one of those candles on the way down, you're going to be a very happy person suddenly more people are going to become like bears. And one of the reasons why I don't think that this cycle is going to be as simple as whatever everyone else has been saying, oh, it's just going to repeat itself, is because now Wall Street is in. And this is a calling card of Wall Street. High-frequency trading bots mixed with shorting. They're actually going to court for that right now, ironically. So this is like a traditional feature of Wall Street. This goes to show that in the previous... Sorry. In the previous uh, cycle, oh, I'm going to get rid of that now because we kind of know what that is. We saw a wipe off where it's like higher, high, higher, uh, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. And then bam, over here is when it lost steam. So that's like a standard wipe off. And you would have basically traded it probably around this zone to short it. You know what I mean? But wipe off. I'd have to learn a little bit more about the most appropriate way to trade it before I talk about it. Head and shoulders is pretty simple, pretty standard. And that's more or less what I wanted to say here. So if Wall Street is in, this is definitely their calling card because they love shorting the market. They hate, they hate things only going up because they don't get a chance to rebuy. So that's a very big part of it all. From there, more or less, all I can say is guys, if you had the chance to tether up, good on you. If you didn't, then fuck, hold, hold tight, bro. Because at the end of the day, none of this is necessarily permanent. You know what I mean? Like, it just seems like another wave that's going on. And especially considering all the things that are going on politically right now between Russia banning and potentially inventing, uh, in, uh, invading Ukraine, the truckers striking in the U.S. and Canada and that whole thing, like... Commodities and assets are going to go down because of shit like that. 
because people get flooded out, they get scared, and that's usually when retail will freak out the most. And that's kind of why I see this as more of a, like this shoulder area, this whole region was more of a retail thing. That's, that's how I see it. And I'm trying to think if I have anything else to say about that. I guess from there, if you decide to go long or short or whatever you decide to do, because this isn't financial advice, just an opinion, keep things low leverage and start learning how to map your exits and your entries in and out of things. Because if you do decide to do day trading, learning a little bit of things like this will actually take you a lot farther. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm definitely going to leave some sources in the description of like head and shoulders, charting analysis and some things that can help you out so that you could make your own trading decisions educated in an educated manner. Take care.